Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. And today I'm going to work on another of Paolo's reels. Paolo sent me four. He sent me two pen squalls. He sent me a lever drag uh, Shimano, and he sent me a, a 114, uh, 113 pen senator, the 4.0. And I, I did work on the 4.0 earlier. We're going to work on the uh, squall now. This is the squall 30 LW for level wind. It's a, a nice, nice reel. It runs smooth. However, his note is that he thinks. He, that the gears are worn. Well, I don't think it's gears when he says it, but he says he has to tighten all the way down in order to get any traction. So I'm believing that his his gears are actually the drag washers. And we're going to take this reel apart. We're going to service it. Uh, we're going to inspect the drag washers, of course, and we're going to need to replace those if that's the case. But I will take you through how to take this apart, how to service it. If the drag washers are needed, they will need to be ordered. But in the interim, uh, I'll put it back together again to show you how to complete the servicing on this reel. The first thing I'd like to do is to show you that uh, schematics are available for the uh, fishing reels. So if you have a problem or if you're going to get started in a reel that you're not aware of, you don't know how it comes together, then the first thing you want to do is go get the schematic diagram for the reel. That'll show you the burst diagrams for the parts you're going to take out. And it's also going to show you that if you uh, have a broken part, like the drag washers here, the drag washers are going to be in the stack here, uh, how to go order them. And you can find these schematics on mysticrealparts.com. So I'm going to get started by taking the exterior pieces off. And I'm going to thank our first responders and essential personnel and everybody involved in keeping us safe during the pandemic. Uh, while I do that, I just appreciate everything you're doing. You are our local hometown heroes, and whether you're in the medical or in the supply chains or in the uh, uniform services, everything you're doing is beyond the call and appreciated. All right, I use a, uh, a wrench just to take the handle screw off, and we can get uh, get some of the exterior pieces off. I like to remove the handle screw and a star adjuster just because it's easier to take the rest of the screws off. All right, here's the handle for the reel. This is a good point to note that this handle is different from other pen handles, so there's not a lot of in interchangeability between these. Earlier on, pen used the same uh, setup for the, uh, the, the gear shaft, and you could swap handles between a lot of their different varieties. Those older variety handles do not fit this reel. All right, we're going to remove the star adjuster and as I do this, this is a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way even if you have the schematic. If you take the pictures you're going to be able to have reference points when you go to reinstall particularly if uh, well, let's say you lost your place along the lines and you weren't quite sure about a uh, uh, an installation or an orientation of a part. And This is a good example right here. This is a click uh, that lets you know that you're backing off the star adjuster. This click can go on two ways. There's a deep side of it and then there's a flat side of it. And it'd be real easy just to flip it if you didn't remember or didn't take a picture or, or if you didn't remember and took the picture, you can go back and look and say, ah, this that's how it goes. Then you have a series of tension washers that come next. Notice that there's a smaller one that sits up top and then there's two belled washers. So again, the sequence is important here. Yes, you can find that stuff from the uh, the schematic, but if you take the pictures, it's a good reminder as well. Inside that, you have a collar and you have the anti-reverse clutch. So we can go over. We move now to taking off the side plate. Get the right screwdriver for the job. Make sure that the screwdriver you are using fits the slot of the screw that you're taking off. It's real easy to uh, go with an undersized screwdriver. And if you find yourself working on a reel that's a salt water reel in particular, where those screws may have gotten embedded with salt um, and they're not coming out easily, well, it's real easy to butterfly that slot with an undersized screwdriver. And then you can have a problem in the future when you go to take it out again or to reinstall it, the screwdriver just may not grip. All right, one more here. And then this is, you just saw me turn it over. It didn't seem right to me that there should only be the, the four. There's two screws under here holding that on as well. So let's take those two out before I remove the other face screw. So 
So this is this is an interesting reel, and I guess little lessons learned here. Don't be afraid to go into a reel because you've never done it before. If you use some of those techniques that I was talking about, go get the schematic diagram, go take a look at uh, where the pieces and parts should be. Take pictures along the way as you're assembling or disassembling the reel. Uh, then that should build your confidence about taking that reel apart. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I wasn't born with the idea of how to fix a Pen Squall, there had to be a first one out there, and uh, that's exactly what I did, and I'm passing that along to you. There's a trim ring now. There's a trim ring going to fall off with this one. It's just a uh, well, way to pretty up the reel, I guess. That's why I call it trim. It's not material to the functioning of the reel, but it is there. And uh, you can back that out. Sometimes you need to just move this up a little bit to back it off, but get that ring out of there. I noticed that as I took this off, the two screws that go on the back have a coarser thread than the, the screws that go on the front, so pay attention to those details, so that when you go to reinstall, you put them in the right position. And now we should be able to remove the top side of this reel simply by pulling out. So this has a setup very similar to a, um, a bait caster, a very small bait caster, if you will. There was one more... Uh, shim washer that goes on top of this collar. Again, note, note that as you go and you're sequencing where they belong. And then take a look at the back. You want to make sure it gets clean. There's a lot of some old greases and the like. It's probably the grease that came from the factory. It is blue grease, so it's, it's Penn's grease. And clean, uh, clean the external pieces of, of this. Now on this roller bearing that's the anti-reverse clutch, you don't oil that. You leave that dry. It's a friction-driven device. If you put oil on there, it reduces the friction, which is counter to what it should be doing. Take a picture here. This is your yoke assembly, your jack assembly, and your main gear. We want to remove these screw these springs right away, because as soon as you go to turn the reel, that spring is going to jump somewhere, and when that spring jumps, you're out of luck. All right. This is what uh, Paulo has a question about. It's um, uh, he's saying that he believes that these are worn. We're going to find out. We're going to remove that whole stack. Just pull it up like that. I'll put them on the table for a moment. We have a yoke assembly with the uh, pinion drive gear, and we have a jack. That pushes the yoke in and out. Next up, then, we have a click ratchet, and we have a fail-safe anti-reverse. Now that anti-reverse clutch is going to do the most work, but this is an old-fashioned uh, tooth dog. And as you reel the, the uh, main shaft, it's going to be fine. When you go to back it up, that should fall back, and you can see how it's falling back here. That's just that's the way that this works, all right? This whole thing should lift up. You may need an assist to keep it equal. It's pretty close. Um, tolerances here. Just pull it up. You don't have to keep them together, but know that they go together uh, to form that piece. And I wanted to do that because I believe under here, I'm going to go check the, uh, the schematic, but under here should be a ball bearing. There's a ball bearing under there, and you want to get to that ball bearing as part of your maintenance. Right, I'm going to take the Phillips head screwdriver. We'll remove the screws. It's a good time to mention if you enjoy these types of videos, please subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please hit the notification button. If you hit that notification button, you'll see the videos when I post them. And you can make a determination as to whether that's, uh, that's a video you want to watch uh, and spend your time to learn more about. I get questions all the time. I work on all types of fishing reels, not just pen. It seems that I do, do a lot of pen reels. Well, that's because the customers that I have in the area use a lot of pen reels, but I work on uh, old brands and all types of reels. This is a trolling reel, but I work on spinning reels, bait casters, and the like. With those two screws removed, you should be able to remove the shaft, and on the bottom of the shaft here, there's a ball bearing. Actually, in this case, it looks like a bushing. It's a bushing. All right, so we just want to make sure it's clean. You can put a little bit of oil on that. 
and you'll see that the other yeah, parts on my bench and that's because I know that I'm going right back in with them to reinstall that's why I didn't put them back into the, the case always dangerous you can always uh, find a way to knock these things loose there's no question about that so be careful if you're leaving your parts exposed on your bench all right I'll put the one in and we'll grab the other a lot of the reel repair and service is all about cleaning the reel, replacing worn parts, and just uh, inspecting to make sure that uh, it's got the right lubrications, oils and greases, and just getting it ready again to, to go fishing. If you take care of the reel like that, the reel's going to take care of you. All right, that main shaft is back in. Next up, because we go in reverse here, the next up would be to clean the channel here. Clean the jack off. A little bit of grease onto the back of the jack. We'll set that in. And one of the trickiest things about this, uh, this service is that you got to line that last that hole up there with the pin on the free spool release. We're going to go next to do the cleanup of the yoke. Just light greasing. Clean the shoulder of the yoke. So this right now I'm just seeing some dirty grease. That's probably the original grease in the reel. But I'm not seeing any damages or any worn parts and Paulo says that uh, he's having trouble with the drags. We'll take a look at the drags next. So there's a slot on this pinion gear that goes forward, just like that. And it actually matches onto the spool, just like that. Last thing I want to do then is clean off the click ratchet. I'm using my paper towel to do that. And I want to set this anti-reverse dog again. You want to check the gap here. If the gap is wide and it doesn't look like it's going to hold, then you can tap down on that to, uh, to reset it back. Once you've done that, come on back and, and reload the dog. And when you go to load this ratchet, it needs to, to fit properly on the rectangle on that gear shaft. Okay, that's working fine. And then we had the, the washer that sat on top. All right, so now it's time to, to get to the question that, that was asked earlier. Is this, uh, are the drags worn? Or what's going on here? Well, that's an interesting wear pattern here. I'm not sure. This has got a reverse pattern actually. So it uses its washers this way. And these washers are pretty well worn. So we're, we're going to go get replacement washers. And we'll be able to, uh, to redo this. So we're going to pretend for the balance of this just to continue to show you how this gets serviced. Once you get the new washers in, you're going to re-lube the main gear. You're going to check, make sure that you have clean teeth. You can use a hard bristle brush to clean that, those teeth. And then you can re-grease the main gear before putting it on. Checking my schematic for a moment. Hmm. Okay.
one of the things I'm seeing here, and the reason why I think this is not working, is that as I look here, it tells me that I have my click ratchet, I have a graphite washer where I found the metal washer, I have my, my cups, and then up top here, I have that cap. So I think what's supposed to happen with this is that this graphite washer goes next, not this. Because those, those washers are worn, but they're not worn terribly. And then the other side here says I've got unusual wear here that I shouldn't have. And that's because there's a cup. My take on it is that, uh, that this belongs underneath this cap, like that. We're going to find out. I don't know why I have that there. All right. Next up, then, is the round washer. Also, the thing to note here that's interesting is that these teeth line up perfectly. So with that other level in there, it's, it's more proud. Just curiosities. That's why you get this schematic. All right, that goes next. These can be um, lubed or left dry. There was lube on here, so I'm going to use some Cal's Universal Dry Grease just to freshen these up. And when I do that, I like to work off the excess. Wipe it off on the paper towel. And let's reseat this. And we'll go for one more here. Now, the one thing that's kind of got me curious here is that this washer here, the cap washer, is smaller. But I don't think it needs to be large because of the way that this next piece goes in. So we're going to find out when we got to put this back on now. Now that'll certainly limit out the throw of the, um, the cupping going on here. It should also increase the uh, flexibility in that uh, drag tension. All right, two springs go on next. So this is where we want to make sure that we load this pin in with the slot that's on the jack. Push that down. And then I'm going to raise this up. Make sure that it's in the up position because that's where I have the slot right now. We've taken care of all the internals, so now we want to line those screw holes in the case, and you just want to flip your button, and I just saw it pull in, so now I know that I have the free spool correct. All right. This is a good place to put that back screw in first, because you don't have to worry about rustling a trim ring and losing the, the hold on the case. So let's go put that one in first. So most of real repair is following a set process. If you keep keep it defined and repeatable, or repeatable, then uh, you'll have success. It's when you start doing a lot of things unusual or trying to take shortcuts or that, that, that that's where you lose your place or you lose a piece or something else uh, that shouldn't happen happens. All right, now that I got the case held on, now I can go grab that trim ring. And I had to snake that under, so I think that that's probably what I have to do here. I just find a balance point where I can flip it around. There you go. I did that by moving the, the angle on that free spool release. We'll go put the four of these on. So if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, if you um, maybe you're working on a project and you're stuck, maybe you've got a reel that's just not performing right, and you kind of dial this video up just to see maybe if you could do some diagnosis on it and maybe it didn't give you the answer. Well, if you leave that in the comments section, I do try to answer those. And I do try to answer them the morning after you leave that uh, 
make that comment. Typically, I'm in my shop. When I'm in my shop, I'm working on reels. It's kind of tough to, to do that on a break or whatever. But if you, uh, if you leave a question or a comment, I do try to respond kind of over morning coffee the next day. So comments are welcome. If you try calling me, there is a phone number on the business card that follows. If you try calling me, you're going to have marginal success. The reason for that is the phone stays out of the shop and uh, it's hard for me to return that call. So, Especially if I'm doing a video, right? Who, who, I'm going to leave that phone as far away as I can if I'm doing one of these videos. It just doesn't make sense to do it that way. There's a collar next. That's for the anti-reverse. Just work that down. You have to find the square set on the shoulders to get that collar in. Then we had that little uh, shimmering ring going next. Then we had the series of rings. Remember what I said, we had two bowed washers here. Those are tension washers, they're not flat washers, they go next. Then we had the smaller washer one on top of that. And again, if you had any questions, you would go back to your schematic if you didn't take the picture. Or if you took the picture, go reference your picture. Then we have our little click mechanism here. Remember what we said, the cup faces up on that one. And then we can go reinstall the star adjuster. I like to tighten down on these and eventually you're going to get to a point where you may not be able to get that click in. You can see the click from the back here. It might be a little difficult to see, but you can see the click from the back here. And all you have to do is use a little screwdriver or something to push that click in. That'll help it properly seat as you go forward. If you don't, I've seen these things come in with bent, uh, bent click mechanisms and the like. It's really something you don't want to do if you don't have to do. We have the handle to continue to tighten down on that. And I know I have it properly set now, I can hear it. And then take the handle off because you have one more piece here. You have that little tension washer that goes underneath. Handle. There should be a, yep. I'm going to say there's a little washer that goes on next that the handle is embedded to. And we have our screw. The set screw just fell on the floor. We'll go get that in a moment. And I'm looking at my parts tray, and this is another value of the parts tray. I have one more screw in there. And if I didn't have the parts tray, it may have just be that it uh, gets resigned to going missing for life. In this case, it's in my parts tray, and I know where it belongs. So I think whenever this reel was apart last, there was an error made in the, in the installation. Here's that screw I was talking about, and it goes back here. It's the other one for the backside tie down, so let's go ahead and put that in. And we'll come over, we'll show you the spool, and we'll show you the line guide mechanism, and eventually I will get that little tie down screw off the floor there. And actually what I'm going to do is I'll pause the video right now, I'll go get that uh, handle set screw, and we'll come back. Okay, got the screw. Let's just tighten that down. I want to test that drag right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, that's plenty tight. Apollo, we solved your issue. That, uh, that piece did not belong where it was. Not a problem. We're back uh, rocking and rolling again. All right, let's take the spool out. We'll show you the back side of that. We'll show you how to solve the, the pawl. Let's do the pawl first just because it's right in my line of sight. You want to take your pawl cap off. That's a screw slot below. You want to remove the pawl just like that. And you want to check the pawl, 
the teeth need to be even. In this case, they are even. It may be hard to see, but they're even. Equally spaced, you want to make sure it's clean. Take any debris that may be off there uh, on the shoulders. Get that there. Reinsert the paw. And one of the things you might want to do is hold your finger on the paw and rotate the reel. And eventually you, it will push down and seat properly. When you do that, let's put a drop of oil on there. And I oil the worm gears. I don't. Uh, I don't put grease on that because grease to me is a dirt trap on those worm gears. And if you trap the dirt and it gets caught in those tracks, it can destroy the tracks and then you've got more problems than, than you thought. All right, so we should be able to have a functioning worm gear, nice and oiled and clean. So that leaves the back end and the spool as the final part of this. I'm going to remove the four screws on the trim ring. It takes a little while to service this. You shouldn't have any question at all about whether it's worth it. So if you take the time, this is probably 20 or 30 minutes, take the time, do the service. This reel is going to last you a long time. If you uh, ignore it until something breaks, well, that's kind of what happens, right? It breaks and then either it may become unrepairable, depending on what breaks, or it uh, and just be sub perform suboptimal in terms of performance uh, along the way. So why chance it? Uh, there's always downtime. Even if you're in Florida, there's downtime where maybe the fish that you go for are out of season, or uh, maybe the, uh, the boats aren't running, or whatever. There's always downtime. Find the 20 minutes or the 30 minutes to go ahead and do this. It's just uh, going to prolong the life of the reel. And maybe, just maybe, it will help you to avoid uh, problems later. This is interesting. We have broken line on this. So maybe that even had some contribution to it. There's a whole piece of line here that's trapped it shouldn't be. And wouldn't it surprise me if uh, that had something to do with the, the slip as well. So we're going to remove the, the spool. I really got knotted in there. That's Kind of interesting. It actually looks like it's tied its own little knot there. I'll try and get a knife in here to work that out. So a couple of little surprises here. There we go. All right, all solved. Apollo asked me to keep the braid on. We can do that. As a general rule, I recommend that you change your, your line every year. If you just change this line, I'll respect that. Particularly monofilament. Monofilament has a horrible memory to it. And what happens with the monofilament is that the uh, line gets memory in it. And that memory um, will cause issues later on. You've got a lot of grease on non-moving parts here. That just invites trouble. You do have a bearing in the back, which we will oil. These are Teflon gears. You do not need to do anything with those gears at all. All right, everything checks out on this side. We've done the paw. We've done the spool. So you can just reassemble here. When you go to find the, the positioning, generally the nameplate is, is perpendicular to the, the, the real seat. And then just put the four screws, which are the same size, back in. And uh, we'll take a moment again to, uh, to thank the first responders and essential personnel. And thank you for watching. This has been a long one, but uh, at the end of the day, that's kind of how you learn these. You, don't want to skip any steps you don't want to take anything for granted and uh, as I like to do I like to explain it along the way my goal at second chance tackle is to keep fishing reels working and uh, give reels a second chance on those that aren't working uh, but more importantly it's to pass along what I know to uh, to the viewers so that they can do it themselves 
and uh, again if they don't want to do it themselves I'm happy to work on your meals for them but that's not the primary focus of this channel the focus on the channel is kind of pass along what I know leave a legacy if you will all right two more to go final test and uh, Paul will have another one ready to go fishing again So curious uh, how that uh, got out of sequence there, but it did, and uh, issue resolved. That's well, some of the lessons learned today. We learned that the schematic is helpful, even if you know the reels. If you have a question, like I did, why why wasn't I seeing a, uh, a different uh, reel there or a different part there? Then uh, the schematic is is your, your answer. Here we go. Nice and smooth, easy free spool. We know we've got that locked up. This one's ready to go fishing again. So again, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please like it. If uh, you have questions, leave them in the comments. And by all means, please have a great day. Please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.